This is The Art of Thought, episode 14, recorded on October 24th, 2018. In this episode, I'm going to talk about minimalism. So I'm going to be talking about minimalism in the way that you wouldn't really imagine. Um, I'm going to be talking about it more towards... Um, more towards the idea of simple living. So I'm going to show you guys in a little bit a, a Wikipedia article here. Um, again, this podcast is no, it's not supposed to be overly educational. So you take it with a grain of salt, whatever happens. Also, let me, let me lower this screen so I don't look at it. There we go. So there we go. So yeah, it's minimalism. And the idea of minimalism is basically, it says here on Wikipedia, in fact, let me pull the page up, Uh, there it is. On Wikipedia, it says, uh, simple living, or minimalism, encompasses a number of different voluntary practices to simplify one's lifestyle. This may include, for example, reducing one's possessions, generally referred to as minimalism, or or increasing self-sufficiency. Simple living makes you characterized by individuals being satisfied with what they want, with with wait with what they have rather than what they want. Although ascent ascent oh my goodness, asceticism or something asceticism uh, generally promotes simple uh, simple living simply by refraining from luxury and indulgence. Not all proponents of simple living are ascetics. Man, I cannot read this word. Uh, Simple living is distinct from these living force. I mean, this. Wow, I can't read today. I really can't read today. Simple living is distinct from those living with enforced poverty as it is a voluntary lifestyle choice. So. The idea of what they're saying here is essentially they're they're, I feel like they're saying more um, simple living or minimalism is a voluntary choice it's not the idea of doing it as an involuntary thing if you're poor poverty and stuff like that, i'm not gonna say poor in this if you're poverish and stuff that's a whole different idea um that's a whole different thing because you didn't have the choice to but if you make the choice to live minimally like very minimally um then definitely definitely That is what they're talking about, about simple living. So if you've ever seen the HGTV show, um, if you've ever seen the HGTV show about, I think it's small houses or something like that. In fact, let me let me see if I can find it. I think it's called small houses. Uh, HGTV small. No, small, uh, small small homes there you go so hgtv has a um has a i think a show it's called small homes and let me see no they have a link on their website for a topic called small homes but some tv channel um oh it's called tiny homes or is it i think it's tiny homes some tv channel has a um thing on tiny homes and the idea is that you live Whereas I have this whole entire place here, this is just the room alone. Whereas I have this whole entire place here, and I have a whole bunch of random stuff here. I've got like a, I've got like a nail clipper here. I've got like, hold on, it's, it's playing music. This is called Tiny Luxury. Um, I've got a bunch of random stuff here. I've got a hard drive. I've got two lights here, one here and one here. I've got uh, an iPad sitting behind me right here. I've got a whole bunch of stuff. The idea of living tiny or living simple is literally um, just just rather than having getting rid of all your stuff. My idea of it is rather than getting rid of everything that you that you need and only having your necessities. um, I was watching this BuzzFeed article. In fact, let me pull this up right now and hit retry. There it is. I was watching this BuzzFeed uh, video on on YouTube. And she was basically, you know, there or right until here. we need an extra storage unit to fit it all. Today, there are more self storage facilities in the US than there are McDonald's, Subway, and Jack in the Box restaurants combined. I heard about minimalism a few years back, and it was something that really piqued my interest. Minimalism is a lifestyle movement of living with less material items. So, this whole community. So, she just said it right there. I, I forgot what her name is already, but she just said it right there. She said minimalism is a lifestyle of living with um, 
mostly very little items. Um, basically, this desk, rather than me having like an extra phone here, an extra, a separate holder for my business cards, um, an extra phone here, and having like three different belts, minimalism would be literally having one belt. Let's say this was my one belt. Minimalism would have this one belt, and that would be it. You know, and, and that would be what you use for every little, everything you do, everything you do that needs a belt. Or you have one phone, and this is exactly what you would use for almost everything. Um, because technically, at this point, you can use your phone to do just about everything. Minimalism would say you don't need to have a ton of everything. You only need the necessities. And then there's another idea of minimalism where it's more like, you you have what's important to you is what you have so you would keep only what's important to you and nothing else so minimalism is just that mindset where you only you either not have many things at all you only have your important things on one side or the other side i've heard the other argument for minimalism is you're only keeping what's important to you so everything in your house has an important value to you and so that means that if you have 300 different types of clothing, chances are you you don't need every single one of those clothes. All of those clothes don't are not important to you. You only the only clothes that are important to you and mean something to you are like your key amounts of clothes, maybe like five to ten pa- clothes. I say pairs just because that's what you call clothing a lot of the time is pairs of clothes, even though it doesn't pair doesn't mean two in terms of clothing. So you would maybe have. Um, you'd maybe have your running shoes if you if you're minimalizing and not having like three of every type you don't have backup you'll have running shoes you'll have work shoes you'll have um at some point you probably won't even have daily shoes honestly and then you'll have like um your like fancy party shoes so your shiny shoes that you don't wear ever because they're uncomfortable you would have all of that stuff and that would be what you would have but if you're going on minimalism true minimalism where you don't have you only have the necessities. You may honestly combine your running shoes and your um, your running shoes and your daily shoes into one, and have it just one running shoe that's also your daily shoes. You may also have your work shoes as being your work shoes and your party shoes. So when you go out to something fancy that's not like heavily dancing, your work shoes are what you use because they still look nice to be presentable and professional, but they also are nice enough to go out with. Um, you'll have maybe like a few clothes, depending on whatever your style is. You'll have just a few. You'll have your, your fitness shoes, your fitness, I mean, your fitness clothes, which will essentially be your, um, your fitness slash everyday clothing. So you'll have sweatpants or, or, you know, joggers or something. You'll have your fitness slash everyday clothes. You also have your, um, your fancy clothes, just like your dressing, your, your party and fancy clothes for work. Uh, and a minimalist will only have like a type for each side of the spectrum, whereas a person who's what I'm gonna coin as an 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 importantalist, an important an importantalist, an importantalist will actually have um like key things for every situation, but they won't have backups of all of that because minimalism doesn't mean you have backups. Minimalist means that you have one and not backups so that that's the idea of minimalism and there's been a lot of shows and a lot of a lot of things that you've probably seen that relate to it um one of them is that tiny luxury homes in fact let me see if i can pull this up so hgtv has um lauren and kalani's tiny house clearly this is not a tiny house did we ever take prom pictures yeah Kind of. We're both moving out of Kalani's parents' home to Seattle, and we're ready to start our lives together in our new tiny house. One thing that I can't live without is my music. We're excited. That'll be amazing. In the back corner, they'll build a separate space for Kalani to play music and for Lauren to use as a study. Oh man! Cool. So you yeah. see what sound going on dampening there. panels. Let me turn on. Co- let me turn on captioning. Uh, the solid wood door will provide additional weight. On there we go. I'm turning on captioning for those people who want to see it. Privacy. There we go. Just off of this room will be a 20. So it's a smaller home bathroom. compared to their giant and above, house. Above a 56 square foot master loft for a king size bed and 48 inches of headroom. Dang. And to finish, luxurious details everywhere: hardwood flooring, solid wood trim, 
and skylights throughout. The overall cost of this home is $73,000. So there you go. They have um, 140 square feet of space. And then they also have a overall house price of everything they would need, honestly, in life. Rather than paying $400,000 for a giant house, $73,000 for a house. And they'll have all their essentials in it. And that's it. And they'll be fine. So that that's the idea. I'm making sure there's no one outside. That's the idea of um, of minimalism, where it, it's not necessarily you having a ton of things. It's more you having what you need. And that's it. So one idea for me was like when I was back when I was in college, um, most college students, they have like a laptop and stuff. And I was just like, you know what? No, I had a no. Most college students, they had a laptop and like a gaming console of something uh, but rather what I had was I had an all-in-one computer that I bought from like H.H. Gray and the all-in-one computer did everything it had one power cable you plug it in everything played games it did everything I didn't have a game console that first year and um, yeah so I was and then I had only <coughs> I had only like what was on my back because what I had brought was just like a small, not relatively, a relatively small bag of clothes. Didn't have much. Obviously, I acquired more throughout um, my years of being in school to the point where I had too much and I have too much. Um, but I didn't even have a separate second monitor like this. This monitor that I'm using right here um, is on my right is my old TV that I first got when I went to school. And that was even something that I didn't have. When I when I was in school, it took uh, it took like three months before I actually purchased it. I don't even know. I think it was like two hundred dollars or something like that. And then the monitor in front of me, this ultra wide LG thing, that's also like another monitor I got later on, like two years later. And then this computer down here that you guys definitely cannot see, I had gotten this thing like in September. I had built it myself, and it was, you know, it was too much money. And so, like, I didn't, I stopped downsizing is one thing. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I had, I stopped downsizing and I started just getting things because out of impulse that, like, I was like, all right, screw it. I'm going to future proof everything. And, and I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't want to just, like, get what I needed at the time and then get more later, which is how a lot of people, honestly, I feel like in New York live is you, because you don't have space. So you get what you need and then you, you go back to the store and get more of it. That's why stores charge more for things because they know that people uh, will come back often. Whereas here in the suburbs, people don't go to the store often because they buy big bulk so they don't have to go back. So char stores have to charge less to get people to go to the store more often. And it's just, it's the psychology and terrible idea of what's going on in the world, but that's just how it is. And so, like, the idea of me making this show, this episode, was... I, I moved back to my parents' house right here, and you, I hear a TV going on in their room over there. I hear a TV going on downstairs. They have two TVs. Um, my mom even left it on when she went to work, and, like, they're showing the same thing. Do you need two TVs? Probably not. We have two TVs downstairs, and it's a townhouse, so you have TV in the dining room next to the kitchen, and then, like, maybe five steps over, you have another giant TV in the living room. And a true minimalist wouldn't have two TVs at all. If you if TV really is important to you, you'd have one TV in your whole house, and it maybe be in the living room, and that's it. Um, and then you wouldn't store. You maybe store split where you store your clothes. If you live in like a studio apartment, you split it to also where you store your plates and and spoons, and plates and silverware. And even with plates and silverware, with minimalism, you'd also be like, okay, I only need one fork, one knife, one spoon. That's it. And I make do with all of those things. Um, that would be the idea, too. And then maybe I'll have one kitchen knife, which still stretches it because, uh, or chef's knife. But that stretches it because you could probably use your regular knife to do it. Or use your chef's knife to spread butter on your bread. As well as cut your bread really easily. So, that's the idea of minimalism. Is that I know this is going to be a shorter show. But that's the idea of minimalism in, in that... Um, you you are essentially downsizing everything you have and only using the essentials. So like this camera here, I have another camera that is actually, let me see if I can find it. I have, ugh, there it is. I have another camera here. I don't know if you guys, because I have a webcam on as well as it, but I have my Sony um, A7, A7 II sitting here. 
and um and I have this camera here, my older camera that I use right now. And my what I've been wanting to do, you know, to minimize what I want uh, is versus what I need is this camera here. It works and all. Honestly, I really don't need this other one. The only thing with this other one is I got a good deal on it, which is impulse, which is how you start aggregating and getting more stuff. But this camera here, the Sony, this other Sony, um, it's a lot smaller because it, it literally it literally fits in the palm of my hand. Um, and it's just, it's a lot easier to handle. But the thing is that the screen that I'm looking for is on this one because the screen on this camera, the a 77 II, doesn't, fl I mean, flips forward. So literally like the a seven, in fact, let me see if I can pull it up. The a seven, it's screen. Hopefully both are showing it. It's screen only does this. This is, a, this is the most it articulates. So I'm going to show it to the camera here. Let me let me do this. I'll show it to the camera here, and then I'll show it to the webcam. It only does this. It can't flip up. It can't flip down. So when you want to show yourself, you can't see yourself. And that's the reason why I'm still using my old one, because the old one can literally flip forward. Um, I don't want to move the old one because I don't know where how it will view me again. But that's the idea of how it works. And like, so I've been, me myself, I've been looking at other cameras that they articulate, like the Canon EOS R. Uh, I've been looking at that. I've been looking at some other cameras, like the Nikon or Nikon Z6. I've been looking at all those cameras just to see which one for every feature that I'm looking for, 4K. I'm looking for um, having ports on the camera so you can actually hook microphones to it, a cold mount or, I mean, a hot shoe on top so you can hook external uh, mics to it, such as... So I can hook up like this, um, this Rode microphone to it. Uh, I'm looking for stuff like that that I want to use, but I need the cameras to have that stuff as well as hopefully an articulating screen. That way I can not have to carry a separate monitor or not have to guess where I'm framing, how I'm framing my shot. So that's the type of stuff I'm looking for to do. And even right now, um, to minimize, like rather than me getting a separate device to um, hook this camera here that I'm using up to the computer so I don't have to use the webcam that I'm using for the stream. Um, I'm looking at the Elgato Stream Link um, or Cam Link. But the thing is, that's $100. At the same time, the Elgato HD60 um, does the same thing. But the difference with that is that um, when I want, when I, when there's a, when I'm streaming, there's a delay, a heavy delay with the Elgato Stream Link, not Stream Link. Uh, HD 60 so I'm like I don't know what to do perhaps maybe I can the thing is when I want to stream with the PS4 I know the PS4 has a built-in thing and the Xbox one has a built-in recording thing but that's different so I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to not have so many different devices point is like in all and just focus on one device that does everything that I need um, and it's hard to do that to downsize especially how we live right now it's hard to downsize a true minimalist would not have speakers. A true minimalist would just use their phone to listen to music or their laptop speakers to listen to music. They wouldn't get separate speakers to listen to music from their laptop or phone. So that's the essential idea of a minimalist. You live smaller in a way. You don't have as many stuff. Your room isn't filled with a bunch of crap. Uh, furniture everywhere of random. You don't have an end table because you already have your dresser to put your alarm on, you know, if you need an addresser at all, or you put it in a basket, something. But there's there's extreme minimalists. There's just average minimalists where you just don't have a lot of furniture and a lot of stuff, not a lot of clothes. And it's just, it's a lot of stuff. You could research this forever. What I'll do um, for this podcast is I will put the links that I showed you guys. I'll put them as well as this documentary that I actually found um, here it is right here. So I found a documentary here. It's from it's called Minimalism, and it's actually from The Minimalists. Um, so I'm showing you the website. Let me see. Yeah, these are The Minimalists. In fact, their website is even bare. They don't even have much. And it says this is Joshua Fields, Milburn, and Ryan Nicodemus. Uh, and they helped over 20 million people live meaningful lives uh, with less through their website, books, podcasts, and documentary. The Minimalists have been featured on New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Boston Globe, Forbes, Time, and more. So they've done a lot, clearly, and they just, they're all about minimalizing everything. 
uh, and they do blog posts and everything like that. So if you want to read more about uh, minimalizing things, you can go to you can refer to their stuff and see. Actually, let me do this. You can refer to their stuff and see more. Let me zoom in. So you can see some essays. You can listen to less. Um, you can just do a lot. And there's a lot here that you can look at. So I'll put a link to everything that I have talked about um, in the links below. And just the description, the show notes, I'll do everything. Um, also, before I close this podcast out, I also wanted to let you guys know that I started a new YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel is just about me, um, just about everything that I enjoy doing. Um, I might even double post this podcast on not only my podcast host, but I'll also be putting it on the podcast YouTube channel, which is The Art of Thought, uh, which is the same name as the podcast. You just look that up on YouTube. You'll find it. Um, I'm, I'm going to also put it on my personal YouTube channel that I just started like a couple of days ago. It's called Just Kwaku. And so you see my name actually right there. You see my name um, if you're watching the playback of the stream right there. Um, you'll see that that is essentially the that's this podcast and that's what I do. And then you also see some other videos just about my life around and just my blog post that I used to do back in the day and just some more. So if you are interested in any of that stuff, you can see all that stuff in the show notes and you can see all the links that I've done in the show notes as well. Um, let me know what you guys think. You can contact uh, me Kwaku at the Instagram that you see below you or if you're watching the a different portion the one the portion that I'm using from my camera here you can watch it on um, you can watch it on all podcast hosting network and YouTube contact me on Instagram that guy Quay and send an email helix TV at outlook.com for more information my name is Kwaku and hope you guys have a wonderful Wednesday take care everybody